Welcome to the Mighty Dragon. Some of you know I have binge watched the entire series of The Last Kingdom, so I'm <laughs> delighted to welcome to the podcast the actor who played one of my favourite bad guys from the series, Athel Helm, Mr. Adrian Schiller. Hello, how are you? Hi there, I'm all right. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me on. Oh, great. I, I'm actually going to touch on this bad guy thing later to see if right. Adam was misjudged. Maybe he wasn't such a bad guy. We recently saw you, um, obviously, in The Last Kingdom. But when did your journey into acting start? Oh, gosh, that's a long time ago now. Um, <laughs> I did, of all things, a degree in philosophy at University College London. Um, but I'd always been very interested in acting and... Um, I did a lot of amateur work while I was there, and a, a small company of a group of group of friends. Um, we formed a little theatre company and pursued our dreams, as it were. Um, so I started in a small way, you know, um, doing that. We managed to tour in the States and things. And, you know, slowly found agents, other jobs. It just sort of, it grew. I wouldn't say it was like a sort of, a comet's rise but it, you know you just keep your head down and keep going really yeah and so then it just developed into a, a huge acting career now for you well yes I suppose so I suppose I mean all things are relative you know um, <laughs> but, but it's but it's yes it's um it's a pretty dependable dependable line of work for me and it's a very fulfilling thing yeah. to do so we saw you join the series in season three. Um, what did it feel like to become part of this series? Well, I didn't. I, I didn't really know what I was in for. Um, <laughs> I, I had. I, I. I simply got a phone call one day to say, "Would you like to come and do this?" We don't really know who the character is or what he's going to do yet, but um, you know, he'll join in a short way into season three and. Um, We'll have him in for at least for a few episodes and see how things go. Right. And um, I hadn't actually watched it then, so I, you know, settled down and thought, oh, this is fantastic. I'd love to be part of this. Um, and then sort of turned up and did my best to see what would happen next. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad to say that I think that they have felt probably um, that because um, Simon Kuntz, the um, uh, Otter the Elder, had made his departure, um, and um, Bjorka obviously was also going to be, uh, his, his role was going to diminish and go, that they needed to have that sort of elder statesman character yeah. um, as, as a different version of the elder statesman, but, but as, a, as, a, as a sort of counterbalance to the, you know, because it's, it's got the, the show's got a much sort of younger vibe mostly, but it's important to have it weighed against that. So. So yeah, I, I I joined in willingly for a, for a few episodes and was happy to see that there were more to come. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I don't know about you, but being British, I I found myself learning quite a lot about the British history, which I'm quite embarrassed to say I didn't know too much about. Well, I don't think. Yeah, no, I don't think anybody knows that much about the the, the Middle Ages. That you yeah. know, I mean, I mean, some people do, but I mean, there's 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 not a great deal of reliable history. There's, you know. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicles, which yeah. obviously was Alfred's great idea, and then there are various um, Scandinavian books. But in terms of um, English history, which it really is, um, there wasn't very much recorded at the time. So, yeah, absolutely. I was going to say for your character, how much research did you do? Well, it wasn't. It, it, it wasn't really terribly relevant because I mean, I mean, Bernard Cornwall did the, did the research, um, but then. He invented something new from that, and then the writers in the show in, in, indeed invented something else. So, um, in, in some respects, you can get diverted, and um, by having too much information, which isn't really re relevant to right. the actual character you're playing. Um, and I think one of the things as an actor that I've had to learn to do over the years is. You, you have to focus on your job and your job is to create from what's on the script 
a, a believable character, you know, with understandable motivations. And um, if you get too involved in trying to actually affect what the script is, you're really doing somebody else's job. Right. Okay. They don't. They don't really appreciate it. I mean, it's all very. It's, it's fine to have a conversation, but but as far as you know, storylines and scenes are concerned, that's in the hands of the, the showrunner and the and the writers and the producers to a degree and so on. But I mean, actors can get involved in that. Sometimes do. Um, for me, I just feel that you, you, you're spending energy in. I've only got, you know, for some people they've got endless energy and they can put some over here and then put some, I just haven't got that. So I just keep mine for the yeah, for the for the acting good. bit. <laughs> I was going to say, with um Athel Helm's character, um, what did you like most about him? And is that the sort of character you're most drawn to? Um I think they're drawn to me for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think he's a he's a quite an unpleasant person in many respects but um i think what i like about him is is he's he's sort of undaunted and and very resourceful um yeah i mean he 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 nearly gives up after after the the tragedy of his daughter but it doesn't take much to get him you know back on track again and um i think the it's the resourcefulness, I think, that I like. Um, to an extent, the intelligence, because I think he's quite, comparatively speaking, quite a bright character, but it's not so much that. It's just that he will always find a way. He'll always, he'll always be able to work out what the next step should be. Um, and I think as somebody pointed out, I mean, particularly in season five, really it's, it's Ethel Helm's actions which are the motor behind all the story. Yes, absolutely. Because everybody is having to react to whatever it is he did next. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really loved his exit from <laughs> the show as well. I thought that's so Ethelhelm, you know, he's completely in control again, isn't he? Yeah, in a way, he keeps that for himself. Um, and I, I think that the, as well, because his, um, his sole motivation, I mean, his, his genuine motivation was to put his grandson on the throne. Yes. Um, and when that became impossible and when his grandson abandoned him, perfectly reasonably under the circumstances, yeah, but absolutely. Then, it, then it's game over, you know, yeah. you know and, he's, and he's wise enough to recognise that and go, well, you know, they fought, fought as hard and as far as I can. Yeah. I mean, you know, if only the King of Scotland would have done what he's bloody told, I'd be all right. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that bloody Constantine had a mind of his own, how dare he. <laughs> <laughs> so would you say he was a devoted uh, grandfather or a cunning mastermind? Um, well, I, th I think a bit of both. I think that, I, th I think that the idea of um, dynasty, you know, the idea of um, families and bloodlines imprinting themselves on history yeah. It's not, it's not, you know, it's not just him. That's a lot of people thought in those ways. So I think, um, however dishonourable, I'm sure many of the fans would think the, the way in which he went about what he wanted, uh, uh, tried to achieve what he wanted. What he wanted was really pretty much the same thing as everybody else. Exactly, yeah. So, I mean, he was just like, you know, that... The, the, Alfred's line is weak and my line can be strong. Yeah. And if I can, if my legacy is to, is to be the, the grandfather of the Kings of England, mm -hmm. well, that's worth fighting for. And, and, and actually I don't think there's anything, I mean, it's ambitious. If ambition is bad, then, then he's bad. But, but I mean, just look at all of those characters. They, they all have. Exactly. That's what I was going to touch on about him being classified as the bad guy. He really was just the same as everyone else. Well, yeah, I mean, he's not very charming, you know, um, and he's not, he's not someone that you would, um, I mean, you don't fancy him. You're not sympathetic to him in the way that you are, say, with Ethelfled. Um, 
um, you don't admire him in the in the way you do um, Uhtred. You don't um, worry for him in the way that you do for Edward, yeah. because he's because he's sort of he doesn't want anybody's help. You know, he rejects people. He doesn't really do love. Yes. Um, I think he has. I think he loved his grandson. Yeah. Um, and I think he belatedly discovered that he loved his daughter. Yes. But I don't think he rec I don't think he really recognizes affectionate love in himself. So he's quite a cold character. And I think that's what makes people what puts people off. So even though what he's doing is pretty much the same thing as everyone from Utrid to Edward to Constantine to Ethelfed, whatever. It's the, the manner in which he does it. Yes. I mean, I noticed people really perked up when I, you know, took the piss out of Whitgar. They thought that was hilarious and there was something they could like, you know. But generally speaking, he's just not a very likeable man. Absolutely. <laughs> right. I, I thought he was great. I really did love his exit. I thought that was perfect for him. I really did. I thought that character would go out like that. Definitely. Yeah. So just something slightly off topic. And my daughter <clears> will kill me if I don't ask you about Beauty and the Beast. And what it was like to be part of oh, that yes. production. <laughs> well, that was amazing, actually, because I mean, it's about the it's about the biggest film set I've ever been on. Um, so I'll tell you a story about that. When they were initially going to make Beauty and the Beast, the Disney sent these scouts out to France to find a village that would be the right village to film it in. You see. So they found a village that they thought was perfect. And then they went round and said to everybody, we want to live in your village for six months and make this film. And obviously we're going to have to take down all the street signs and all the, 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 the lights and the shop fronts and we'll remake everything. But don't worry, we'll give you all lots of money and you can go somewhere else. And they went like hell we will. <laughs> <laughs> you've, never, you've never been to France before, have you? No, we're not going anywhere and you can do one. So... So that failed. So instead of doing that, they just said, well, since that was the perfect village, we'll just build one exactly like it at Shepperton Studios. Wow, so, they, right. so, they, so they built a whole new village. So one of the strange things about that particular production was usually the interiors and the exteriors are completely separate places. But in, in that one, the outside of the pub and the inside of the pub is all the same building. You could film it through the windows, you could go inside and film out. Oh, the, right. the, the, the geography of the whole village was exactly what you saw in the movie. Um, so it was an enormous set yeah. and it had so many people on it. Um, there were like 500 people, you know, rushing around doing this, that or the other thing. They were filming on three cameras all the time. <clears throat> there was, you know, all the, the chorus who were singing and dancing and leaping around. It was, it was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was great fun. Yeah, so oh, I, I I had to ask you about that. I would have been completely <laughs> thrilled otherwise. Yes, um, yes. <laughs> from all of your work that you have a huge amount on your IMDb listing, what are you most proud of and why? Um, that's quite difficult, actually. I think, um, well, I'm certainly The Last Kingdom is one of the things that I'm most proud of. You tend to be sort of proudest of the thing that you last did. Well, not proudest, but most most in love with um, because I mean you know most of these most of these um, uh, jobs they're more than jobs they're they're sort of all consuming activities for the time that you're doing them yeah. so they sort of blot everything else out right. it's like and other things become happy memories you go oh yeah. that was nice but you don't really it's like an ex, I mean, sort of, I suppose she would have liked that, but it's sort of like an ex-girlfriend, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you, you really, really, you shouldn't be thinking of it as anything other than an ex-girlfriend. Um, but The Last Kingdom I thought was great. And, um, and it was partly because, because of the character development and, and that I did have a, uh, a particularly good relationship I felt with Martha Hillier, who was the showrunner. So I, you know, we did have helpful conversations, little tweaks here and there. Again, I mean, go back to what I said at the beginning, I don't like to get overly involved. Um, but, you know, with, with somebody of 
with that skill and intelligence, if you bring up an idea, um, uh, if you know, they'll they'll get it if they want to, you know, um, and then they run with it, and whatever comes back is what you get. Um, but yeah, it was a it was a very productive time and some very good relationships. And actually, you know, working working um, with with Alex Draymond actually as director in episode two, which was ah, which nice. was lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He directed it as well. So that was that was a nice change of, and he was he was great to work with. Really great. Okay, yeah. I, I was going to ask you one last question. Um, sure. What does the rest of twenty twenty two look like for you? Or are you now going to go on holiday after? Well, I, I have got something I'm just about going off to do, but unfortunately, in this in this sort of very competitive and um, in in this in this sort of sort of legalistic world we live in, I'm not allowed to tell you anything. Oh, right. <laughs> that, um, I'm I mean, just sure about that last question. <laughs> no, literally, literally. I mean, unfortunately, we sign contracts or whatever it is, and they always. I mean, it doesn't really matter what it is these days. Everybody seems to think that in order to be really important they have to have a non-disclosure agreement yeah but, but they are legally binding yes so. <laughs> okay i will just say then thank you so much for joining me on the mighty dragon and for answering my questions about the last kingdom and beauty and the beast so thank you so pleasure. much and all the best for the rest of 2022 thank you very much and you too Bye -bye.